Good morning. I think by now you all know who I am, right? Okay, okay. I still like being called the new kid on the block, so that's why I'm asking that. All right, so let's begin, shall we? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Therefore, let everyone who is godly pray to you while you may be found. You are my hiding place. You will protect me from trouble. And surround me with the songs of deliverance. Many are the woes of the wicked. Rejoice in the Lord and be glad, you righteous. Let's sing. So, this is the clock that I have in my office. It's kind of important. That way I can know where I need to be and where I, when I need to be there. And every time I get to the point where I need to be someplace, I know I can say, the time has come. Now, if I said that to you, would you think that's a good thing or a bad thing? The time has come. Is that good or bad? Who says it's good? Who says it's good? Okay. If it's good, what does that mean? If it's good. The time has come. Can you give me an example of what that means if it's good? The time has come. It's what? It's finally happening. It's finally happening. What's finally happening? anything. So, Brussels sprouts are finally happening. You think that's a good thing? No. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, what's a good thing if we say the time has come? Oh, I love you. That's a great answer. 
It's Jesus time. We're going to talk about that in a minute. But let's see, what other kinds of good things could you say the time has come? Jesus is coming. You guys must think you're in chapel. <laughs> yeah, that's really good. Okay, do you have a good one? Tell me. The what? Elsa shoes. I have so many things go over my head that it's worn a path. You can see that. Uh, and I don't know what that one means. Okay, one more, one more chance at this. A good thing that happens. Okay, you going to tell me? Go ahead. Time to spread the word. You guys all have the spiritual things in mind. I am really glad for that. How about this? It's time to have ice cream. Is that a good thing? What, you like ice cream as much as you like Brussels sprouts? Oh, I don't get that at all. How about this? When we say the time has come, you have no school Thursday or Friday. The time has come for that. Is that a good thing? Okay. Okay, good. You know what? Your teachers think so even more than you do. Okay, how about this? The time is, how about this? The time has come as, as, a, as a hard thing, as a bad thing. What would that be? The time has come. What would be a bad thing? To go to war? Okay, that would be a bad thing. I don't know where that came from, but it's a great answer. Braylon. Okay, I'm not putting up with it anymore. It's a line in the sand. I'm not crossing over it. You crossed over it. This is a problem. Okay, you got one for me? You got to speak up a little bit, honey. My ears are not as young as they used to be. To what? I still didn't hear you. I'm not getting that one at all. I'm sorry. Okay, give me a bad one or one that you don't like, things that would not be so good. Tell me. It's what? Going to time out or something. The time has come. You're going to time out. Okay, I get that. That would be a bad one. You don't know anything about that, though, do you? You've never experienced that, have you? Oh, okay. We won't go there then. Give me another one. Detention. Detention. You don't know anything about that either. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm not going to ask your teachers if that's true. What do you think? I thought you had, you had your hand raised. Don't you have an answer? Go. Go to the dentist. That's not my favorite one. It's the drill. That's not so good. But th by the way, dentists are good things. Okay, you got the general idea. The time has come can be a good thing or it can be a bad thing. So when we read this, at once the Spirit sent him, that's Jesus, out into the desert, and he was in the desert 40 days being tempted by Satan. Jesus had just been baptized, and he's going out into the desert, okay? That desert it doesn't look anything like our desert. It's worse, there's no plants growing there. It's a lot of mountains. There's no rivers. There's no fresh water. It's really a tough place. Being tempted by Satan, he was with the wild animals, and the angels attended him. The time has come, he said. So Jesus says, the time has come. Do you think that was a good thing, or do you think that was a bad thing? Okay, we got some votes here. How about if you give me an explanation? The time has come. Did you think Jesus thought that was a good thing or a bad thing? And I'm going to make you explain your answer. It's your opinion. We can do this. The time has come. I see hands going up and then coming down. I think that means you don't know. 
So who's going to be brave enough to answer this? The time has come. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? And tell me why. Okay. Well, that's not what he's talking about. But I really appreciate you offering that. Yes? The kingdom of God, is that a good thing or a bad thing? That's a good thing. Now, here's the bad part. It says, repent. That's kind of a hard thing, isn't it? Because repent means all that bad stuff you've been doing, all the bad stuff you have been saying, all the bad stuff you have been thinking, that is something you turn away from. But he also says, believe the good news. And that some of you had already tapped into when you talked about Jesus. So because Jesus is coming, believe the good news. Believe that Jesus is the Savior. Believe that Jesus is coming to die on the cross. The most important thing, believe Jesus is going to rise from the grave. That is the most important thing. And when we have those kinds of things, we can say the time has come for us to be saved. And that's what Jesus was talking about here. Okay, so we've talked about what Jesus is talking about here. Are there other times when you and I might be able to say the time has come in our lives that are a good thing? Somebody said, it's Jesus time. What's Jesus time? When is it Jesus time? When is it Jesus time? Sundays and Wednesdays, that is the best answer anybody could ever get. Okay, yeah, Sundays and Wednesdays, that's Jesus time. And that's a time that we set aside specifically for Jesus. That was a great answer. I couldn't have given you that answer. You could have done that with. Yeah, and I think that this time of year, when we talk about the time we have special opportunities to say, to look at our clocks and say, this is Jesus time. It's a time for us to remember about our own sinful lives and recognize that Jesus is the solution to those sinful lives. And so we set aside a certain portion of time every week, as you just said, Wednesdays and Sundays now, to be able to come to Jesus and to repent and then also to rejoice because the kingdom of God is at hand. You guys did a great job with this. Thank you very much. And I'm just going to say amen now. Let's sing. Let's pray. 
Dear Savior, you have won and given us the victory. Thank you for suffering, death, and resurrection. Help us know that now the time has come for us to share the good news with others and give us the desire and ability to do so. In your name we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Now, children, go in peace. Live in harmony with one another and serve the Lord with gladness. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Good morning. Thank you, Pastor Clark, for sharing God's word with us and for all of our musicians for playing. Uh, lots of announcements. Rodeo days. So we have no school the next two days. You get off for a rodeo break. Um, how many of you are going to the rodeo? A few of you? How many of you are going to Disneyland? <laughs> all right. Some of you are doing that. Okay. Well, whatever you're doing, I hope you have a fun time, and we'll see you back here next week. Uh, this Saturday, though, our B team uh, bas for basketball, they'll be up at ALA uh, in a tournament, so we wish them God's blessings on that. On February 29th, we have a special dinner here at Redeemer for our good friend Ariella, so I hope your family can come to that, and all the proceeds from that dinner will help Ariella um, with all her doctoring she has. Uh, the golf tournament is coming up, so parents, I uh, hope you got that flyer already, but our annual golf tournament is the first Saturday in May, so start getting your teams together, um, and it's always a fun time. And we'll close today with the February Kids Connection.
connected. Stay connected to Jesus. Welcome to Kids Connection. I'm Olivia. And I'm Jay. More on letters later. First, in the New Testament book of Revelation, God tells us that heaven will be filled with people from every tribe, nation, and language. In this My School story, we stop by Christ Alone in Thienesville, Wisconsin for their adventures around the world. This is about like other people coming from different countries so other people can learn about each other. Like they can taste food, wear different clothes. So I'm wearing Japanese clothes right now from Mrs. Wardell because she used to live in Japan. I want the community to see our school does have kids that aren't just from our hometown. They're from India, they come, they come from Nigeria, they come from China, India, South Korea. They're all over and these kids are in our school right here. And these are the plantains. This is Great. Chin Chin. We tried that. It was excellent. Isn't that right? good? Yeah. Yes. And that's about like you can walk around and learn about each country and like what they have to do with in their culture. And you're gonna like try like their foods or like hear their music. Gianna was born in South Korea. Her parents traveled there to adopt her. Tonight is a special night for her. <laughs> People can like see like where I'm from and then hear like what my parents did to come and get me so then they can have me. God wants us to love each other and so maybe if we can learn about other people's cultures then it would help us to love each other more if we know a little bit about their background or a little bit about what their parents did. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. I learned like they have different languages of course, different countries have different languages, and they have different types of food, and they also have different types of books. So many things that are different. I've never used chaps. Never just first time. Got a successful. God, congratulations. Yeah, finally you're There's one thing we all have in common. Not everybody, but mostly everybody, like everybody in this whole place loves Jesus. Some of us are teaching other people about different places, and all of us are learning about Christ. Next, how do you feel when you get a letter in the mailbox? Pretty exciting, right? In our second story, we get to see Mailbox Ministry in action. When we hear about people who are hurting or um, needing encouragement or maybe even celebrating something, we don't always get to talk to them face to face, but we can collect our thoughts in, in a written letter and we can then share it with them. I do have two thank you notes to read for you this week. I have the first one is from Pastor Steve Kurtzon. If you remember, he had had his hip replaced and then had a bad infection. And um, so you were great with your encouragement to him. So he wrote back to you, Dear Redeemer students, thank you so much for the homemade Get Well cards. They were very thoughtful and well done. Thank you especially for the comforting Bible verses. In Christ, Pastor Steve Kurtzon. Students write letters to others who could use encouragement and send them through the mail. Through their written words, others are brought closer to Jesus. I think when I realized how important it was was when I actually got some of the cards um, because my grandma had just died and, you know, we were consoling in the family. And just reading through all of the letters from all of my fellow classmates was just so encouraging and moving and I just loved it. So I think that's why it's important just to help everyone else who's in need. The biggest lesson I think, well I hope, is that the children know that going forward um, they can share God's word with anyone at any time and that everyone needs that encouragement. And so I, I just hope that they take that with them into life and that they look outside of themselves to see how Jesus showered his love on all of us and that we then in turn can take that love and, and share it with other people.
Do you have a my school story to share? Connect with us at kidsconnection at wells.net. Now it's time for Pastor Tony Schultz. Stay connected to Jesus. The Apostle Paul told the Philippians, Be joyful always. Pray continually. Give thanks under all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. And the peace of God, which is past human minds to figure out or understand, will keep your hearts and minds safe and strong through faith in Christ Jesus. If you stop and think about it, there are all sorts of reasons to be joyful and thankful. When little babies are born, we praise the Lord. And when little babies are born again through holy baptism, I baptized a little baby in the hospital the other day. One day old, not even a day old, just a, an hour old. And I said, we are joyful in our worship in the name of Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And this little tiny newborn baby folded his little tiny hands joyful at confirmations when you declare your saving faith confess your hope and trust in Jesus and now you can come to Holy Communion joyful at graduations faithful studying and learning and growing and serving joyful at weddings and receptions and thankful when Jesus calls people we love safely home to heaven. They have no more troubles, no more sickness or sadness or pain or death, safe by Jesus in heaven forever. It is by grace through faith in Christ alone, found in scripture alone, that we rejoice in the Lord always. Don't grumble, don't complain, don't feel sorry for yourself, but be joyful and thankful to Jesus our Savior. Amen. Thanks, Pastor Schultz. This month, we begin the season of Lent. Share your hope in Jesus with others. Next month, we celebrate the resurrection of the world's Savior, Jesus. Until March, remember, stay, stay connected, connected to, to Jesus. Jesus. Kids Connection! Stay connected! Stay connected to Jesus. As Pastor said in his devotion today, we're in the season of Lent, and so it's Wednesday. We have church tonight at 4.30 and 6.30 and a meal in between, so you are invited to come back for that. And then we have church and Sunday school again on Sunday morning. So I hope to see you at one of those services. Have a great rest of your week and long weekend, and we'll be back in chapel next Wednesday. Mm -hmm.